motherfucker to do the long awaited question answer video that y'all been waiting for. A few of you guys actually hit me up to remind me, bitch, you ain't done this shit yet. When you gonna finally do the video? And I completely forgot to be completely real. Now I know some of y'all are newer. Hey, how y'all living? Welcome to the fam bam, okay? But uh, a little while back, I actually put out a video and asked you guys if you wanted to ask me anything in particular. It's been a while since I've done it, just a straight up question answer video. You guys know I've got an advice series here on the channel that is restarting up again. It is my Ask Sandy series. You guys already know if you guys have any questions related to relationships or careers, life, whatever the case, you can email me at asksandy at yahoo.com. I'll put that information right over cheer so y'all can check it out. I do have some other emails that I've received from you guys, but if there's any more, feel free to shoot those to me, and I will answer uh, specific ones in a, another video, okay? That'll be specifically Ask Sandy, but what I asked you guys to give me were questions specifically to me if you guys were curious about any particular things. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these, so I thought I would go ahead and get to it, okay? Since y'all reminded me my black ass ain't done the shit yet, okay? So, just FYI, Ask Sandy's coming back. Real Housewives of Atlanta recaps are definitely coming back. I didn't do one this week because I got bogged down. Had a little bit too much going on this week and had some backlog videos that I need to get to y'all. Another thing is, if you guys have not checked out my meet and greet video from Dallas, I have been needing to edit that video for the longest fucking time and your girl finally got it done, so make sure to check it out. I will link it down below or I'll annotate it somewhere up and through here, okay? And uh, so definitely make sure to check it out so you can see what happened at the Dallas meet and greet. Other than that, we're going to be doing business as par usual, okay? So, I've got my handy daddy iPad here. I'm basically gonna just go off the dome. I didn't really pick specific questions. I'm just gonna kinda go through the questions th that you answered, um, that you answered, that you asked below the video specifically for this video right up and through here. And if there are any additional questions, uh, leave those comments, questions, whatever down below and I will answer them in another video. I'm gonna do this pretty often in addition to the Ask Sandy videos, okay? Because there may be just questions that may be just general that you may wanna know or that you may want my insight on. So I will do these as well, okay? So, here we go. First up, I'm randomly picking random questions. Here we go. This is a question I actually recently have gotten quite often, which is really crazy because I've never really been, it's been a few years since I've been asked and I'll tell you about that here in a minute. Um, first question was, are your boobs real, okay? Now, y'all know I'm a big titty sister, okay? And uh, your girl's between a double D and a triple D, depending on the bra, okay? I do have a bra video coming up, I promise y'all. I've been talking about it for f uh, fucking ever, I know. Y'all gonna freaking kick my ass about the shit. But I promise y'all that video is coming. I have shot some of it, but I have actually switched bras and I'm trying out some new ones. So I will be coming up with an updated video. I didn't want to put something out and then switch it out, you know what I'm saying? So, are my boobs real? Are the titties real? <laughs> the titties are real, okay? And they're really, really big, all right? I've had big titties since, ah, I can fucking remember. I was probably one of the most overdeveloped kids growing up. I was the tallest in my class uh, when I was in grade school, taller than the boys. I developed really, really fast. It was very awkward for me, especially for me, being a tomboy, wanting to play sports, even though I sucked at all sports I played. But I had titties flopping all over the motherfucking place. This is before they had really cute bras and things for us larger titted sisters, you know what I'm saying? So, and you know, back then you weren't supposed to be wearing no kind of lingerie type bras any damn way. But yes, these are my real boobs. I've had them forever and damn day. I actually did have a breast reduction and uh, that's just give you an idea of how big my titties really were. They actually were quadruple Ds at one point and they were heavy as fuck. Even when I was a quadruple D, that's why I said it's been a few years since anybody's asked me if they're real because I used to get asked all the time when they were larger whether they were real or not too because they sit up, which is why you guys always ask me how I keep my boobs up. My boobs naturally sit up for me, thank God almighty, and it's really hereditary and the whole reason why I had the breast reduction was because they were too heavy. Um, a lot of what my doctor tell, and I will go into more detail, if you guys want me to do a breast reduction video and my experience with that, I'll certainly let you know. You guys know I've mentioned it to you guys before that I have had a breast reduction. Best decision I could have ever made, The uh, but I've been fortunate, okay, to have titties that sit up for the most part, but I do have things that I can show you guys that help the titties, okay? Okay, so I will be putting that in the video as well, okay? But yes, my boobies, the titties, these motherfuckers right here are real, okay? 
Here we go. Okay, how tall am I? I do get that question a lot as well, especially on my Fashion Forward Fridays. Um, I am 5'8", so I'm not really as tall as everyone thinks I am. The biggest thing that makes me seem that way is my legs. I have really super duper long legs and no torso, so when people kind of see me in videos, even in real life, like, damn, you're tall, but really it's just the fact that I got some long ass legs. You know what I'm saying? All right, how tall am I? Am I ever going to have babies? That's another very, 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 very popular question here. Um, I hope to have kids. I hope to be able to have kids. Probably a kid. I don't know about multiples. We gonna see how the first one goes. I'm just being real. Y'all know I keep it funky with y'all. I ain't had one, so let me experience one before I have another one. You know what I'm saying? Um, that being said, yes, the hubby and I hope to have at least one child. I know y'all gonna be like, half one or two or three and four. We gonna see. We gotta have the first one first. But we definitely do want children. So yes, that is the intention. It's just really God's plan. And it's whenever he decides that we are supposed to have one, if that makes sense. So yes, we do want kids though. Kid without an S yet. Okay. Here we go. Am I going to renew our vows? Um, you know what? It probably won't happen for a while. Um, we've been married for a long ass time. You all know if you guys have been followers of my channel for a while or watch us on our vlog channel, which is always linked in the description box. Um, it is the Socialite Life TV. That's our YouTube channel that we daily vlog on and you see a lot of my husband on there. Um, we have been married for oh, ugh, almost 10 years. 10 years almost in July. So we've been together forever. We've been together um, for married 10 years, but we've been together probably going on 18 years. So we've been together for a while, okay? We grew up together, basically. Um, as far as renewing vows, probably won't do that till we're older, to be completely real. We still celebrate our anniversary of when we first met, which is crazy, and we also celebrate our wedding anniversary, okay? So what renewing of the vows probably won't happen for a few years. Where am I originally from? I am, I was actually born here in St. Louis, okay? And I am Haitian American. Both my parents are Haitian, okay? And uh, yeah, both my parents are Haitian. Both were born and raised in Haiti. I actually was born here in St. Louis and then I was um, I went back to Haiti to actually stay with my mom and my grandma for a while and my cousins and so that's why I'm able to speak Creole because I was actually that was my first language before I even learned English so I actually lived in Haiti for a while before I came back to the States but I was born in the States and uh, so yeah every now and again you can hear my accent randomly it's very rare because you know I'm kind of Americanized now you know what I'm saying I've been speaking English for a w long enough to have lost some of it still speak Creole still have a lot of Haitian um, family that live in Haiti okay most of my family most of my immediate family lives in Haiti and I can speak with uh, them in Creole and most of them don't speak English if you can you know imagine so that's why I've been able to retain the Creole but yes I'm Haitian American from St. Louis okay do I miss working as a TV reporter I got this a lot too and you know what I haven't talked about it since um, I haven't really talked much about it since having been laid off some of you guys may not know used to be a traffic reporter at a local TV station here in the STL uh, did that for a little while and then got laid off when management changed so a lot of shifts in management a lot of changes with the staff there several people got laid off and I was one of them um, do I miss it absolutely not I I know that sounds crazy because it seemed like I loved it so much but there were aspects of it that I loved and there were many aspects of it that I absolutely hated and um, one of the things I absolutely hated was the fact that my motherfucking ass had to get up so damn early in the morning I had to be at work ready to go hair makeup clothing all the way together at 2 30 between 2 30 and 3 30 in the morning that's Monday through Friday and granted, we did get out of work early, which was late, but you're so, you know, it's great. But you're so damn tired from having to get up so damn early and going to bed, you know what I mean? It, you know, depending on if you can sleep well for such a short period of time that you can barely function most of the time after you get off of work. So you almost feel like most of the time that you have downtime, you're napping, which isn't really the best, you know, I'm not a big napper. So that was hard for me to adjust to. Um, but, and it also totally depletes your weekends and time with friends and family, holiday time was rough because you always had to be aware of the fact that you had to be up so fucking early. Um, there was a lot of politics behind the scenes and that's always the case with any job, okay, any kind of occupation or whatever the case. I'm not trying to make it sound like it was just in that particular job, but in media there's a lot of politics, a lot of extra shit, a lot of red tape, a lot of bullshit that you deal with and the reality is I was still a black female on a predominantly white uh, news station. So there's a lot of that as well, a lot of things that kind of come about 
color that you pick up or see, they're not exactly the things that, you know, they don't really tickle your fancy, you know what I'm saying? And it makes it a little bit more difficult. Not saying that it was a horrible experience. In fact, I left the station on great terms and I have many friends that are still there, but that's just the nature of the business and anybody who's been in this industry will tell you the same damn thing. So do I miss it? Fuck no. <laughs> not at all. It was a great experience, great resume builder, but I don't miss it at all. Not at all. So, oh, I do get this question too. And um, someone asked, did someone at your job find your YouTube channel? And that may have caused me to get laid off. In fact, no. Um, they were very, very well aware of my YouTube channel. In fact, when I um, even did my first phone interview, I wanted to make sure they knew and they'd been known. You know, they do their research and they will check to see what you're up to, what you're doing. And they were very well aware of my YouTube channel, the content of my YouTube channel. They were very well aware of it throughout the course of the time that I was working there as well. None of that conflicted with anything that I did at the station. So that was something that was very, I was very, very open about. And I told them from the very, very beginning because that was the one thing I did not want was to be censored. I didn't want to have a situation where I had to feel like I had to be put back in a box or super duper conservative. I did have to hold back a little bit working there, um, which I did not enjoy. You guys know I'm pretty just, I'm open and it is what it is. But um, they were very well aware of the YouTube channel and a lot of them support it and still do to this day. So just FYI. I did get this question a couple times too. Can you provide tips on having a successful beauty channel? There's so many things I could tell y'all. However, I did do a video specifically on this. Um, the cameras that you could purchase, what equipment you're going to need starting out a beauty channel, um, that kind of thing. I do have that video. I will link it down below. Just basically my tips and tricks, not even tricks, but my tips to starting a beauty channel. There's really no formula for it, but it will give you some insight on some things that may help you if you're looking to start one or if you have one and you're looking to continue or you might be discouraged. So check that out in the description box down below. Or I'll annotate it up in here if I remember, but check the description box. It should be in there. Okay. <laughs> Do you ever get too much juice? You funny girl. <laughs> no, I can't get enough. Y'all know my husband, for those of you guys who are new, uh, my husband, I call him juice. So that's why they, they asked that question. No, um, I never get too much juice. Okay. This was a question that I, I get asked on random videos. And then I got also asked on this video as well. Do you ever feel inadequate because you don't have a traditional full-time job? And you know, for me, and this is just my experience, I am not one that is necessarily, um, I've never been someone who's ever enjoyed corporate America. Um, there's just aspects of corporate America that I just am not a fan of. And it's just part of my personality, part of my nature. I've always been that way. My parents have always known that about me. My siblings, my friends and my family, they know. Um, do I feel inadequate? Absolutely not because I'm doing what I love and that's really what it ultimately boils down to. And that's what I always encourage you guys to do is to pursue the things that you truly want to do in life because working in a situation of working you know in a job or in a place or doing anything for that matter that doesn't make you happy is so unfulfilling and I think I would feel more inadequate working at a standard full-time job I think because it wouldn't be what I really truly want to do if that makes any sense always been a free spirit always been an out-of-the-box thinker always been that person who's like I don't want to be put into any kind of category and it just you know corporate America just never really worked for me although I've worked in it and I've dealt with it and I've done well with it it just isn't my forte it's not something that I enjoy doing so no no, I, not at all. I don't feel inadequate. Absolutely not. This question got asked a lot as well. And y'all know I keep it funky with y'all. And I will probably ask him in a video and I'll tell you guys about that in a little bit um, and allow him to ask, answer it him, himself. But I can speak for him at least in this video, okay? Um, another thing I got asked was is since um, Juice is also working, do you feel like you've lost some of your significance in your relationship because I'm not working, uh, you know, in a full-time job or whatever standard full-time job not at all not at all I mean we both have always been you know we share the bills we share the responsibilities of the household still to this day we share the bills we share the responsibilities of this household nothing's changed it's just that my occupation has changed but as far as the responsibility for this household the groceries the bills the you know the cars whatever the hell we have going on it is shared so it's not something where he's just footing a bill for every motherfucking thing and now let me let me let me also say that there's plenty of households where there is one primary uh, person. There's one primary caregiver, one person that is the primary, um, you know, the person that is, you know, doing all the finances and bringing home the bacon and all that kind of stuff. And whether you're a stay-at-home mom or whatever your, your setup is, and there's nothing at all wrong with that. That is just what works for you. If that works for you, that's fabulous. But for us, it's if there is no, there's nothing to feel inadequate about. There's no levels of, you know, there's no level of hierarchy based on what we make. It's never been the case, but we share everything. So he's not the only motherfucker putting the bill for anything. I mean, your girl here puts out money too. And that's just how we work. 
It's always been the case. So missing an income. These are very interesting questions and I'll answer them. M missing an income. Does it ever cause arguments um, with finances, you know, and that kind of thing since the number one reason for divorces is finances. Uh, Juice and I don't argue. We give each other shit. If you guys watch us on our vlog channel, you guys know what we mean. Um, we don't really argue. It's not something that we do. I think we've kind of grown out of some of that shit. You know, maybe we were younger and we really didn't know what was going on and we were kind of trying to figure out life and whatever the fuck. But we've kind of just, we figured it out. It's just kind of one of those things and if we have a challenge that comes up, we deal with it. What we've learned to do is sit down and just kind of say, okay, this is what we're going to do. Here's what's coming up. You know, like we just have, we have a car in the shop right now. Shit's going to be expensive as fuck. So what we do is we sit down and we say, okay, what are we going to do to do this? And it's a collective effort. We sit down, we talk about it, and we deal with it. It's not something where it's like, motherfucker, shit. Because we both have that responsibility. Everything that's in this house, the lights being on, whatever the fuck, is both of our responsibilities. So that's how we handle things. It's really not something that we can really argue over. Because arguing and make no kind of money come out of anywhere. You know what I mean? Let's see. <clears throat> <clears throat> and how can you advise others to hold on to a relationship in similar circumstances? Um, I am going to probably do another video on this. I do want Juice to be a part of it, um, which kind of leads me to what I was going to say, which I might as well say now. Um, Juice and I are going to start doing a Real Talk Tuesday on my vlog channel, which is linked down below. And it's basically going to be, uh, you know, a segment that's going to come out every single Tuesday or at least every other Tuesday where we basically answer your guys' questions in, in regards to relationships, etc. It's also going to give you real talk. And now we do mean real talk shit. He's an, just as uncensored as I am. But um, where we're kind of giving you guys our insights on what we've dealt with experience-wise based on the questions you give. Not specific saying, okay, well, do you know, you know, what have you guys specifically dealt with? Although we'll share some of our experiences. But if you have questions related, related to relationships, money in relationships, how to set up things in relationships, you know, marriage, dating, whatever the case, professional questions, whatever the case, we will be answering those questions together in videos every single Tuesday or every other Tuesday on the vlog channel. So definitely make sure to check out the vlog channel down below and subscribe to the channel because those are going to be starting here very shortly. We'll be putting out a video. Um, if it's not already up by the time you guys see this video, it probably will be. And I'll let you guys know if it is somewhere with an annotation or I'll link it down below. Um, but you'll just want to ask us those questions on the bottom of that video. So definitely subscribe to the vlog channel and and you'll see those videos as well. It'll give you guys a man's insight on some things because my insight is going to be male-ish, okay? But I do have some female qualities as well. <laughs> Somebody asked what my birthday is. Y'all should know this shit as much as I talk about this shit everywhere. I'm a damn Aries, okay? Aries stand up, okay? And uh, yeah, by the time you guys see this motherfucker right here, my birthday will be a few days away. I'm April 14th, baby, okay? So a lot of you guys are Aries that are subscribed to me, which is crazy. So happy birthday to everyone celebrating birthday this month. And that's when my birthday is. What made you, made, what made you pick up a camera and decide, decide to do videos? And uh, they also asked about tips, which I already told you guys where to find that information. Um, what made me pick up a camera? I've always done it. I've, I've been a vlogger without technically being a vlogger full time. I guess um, for probably the last six seven years just on my own doing it just to, to, to you know document things going on in my family with my friends and that kind of thing and I would always send it out by email to my friends and family and then it got to a point where I said I don't want to you know send out emails and have it get you know there were firewalls and stuff so once people started putting up firewalls they weren't getting my videos and people were like oh my god I missed your videos that you would send every week with funny things so I ended up deciding to start a YouTube channel and started to put the videos there and then you know also was able to kind of just you know create some you know different Different types of videos on things that I enjoy that I get questioned about a lot which is fashion and makeup and hair and those types of things and that's kind of how it started but I'd always been a vlogger I'd always been the one that everyone knows is the, the one who has got the camera in their hand and ready to go no matter what taking photos and shooting videos so that's kind of how it started will you be going to BeautyCon in New York um, in May Ugh, I wish I wish we literally just got back from Dallas um, and just got back from LA previous to that I plan on going to Kansas sometime maybe in May or June um, heading out to Nashville, Tennessee, because Juice is actually uh, training for the Tough Mudder out in Nashville, Tennessee in the beginning of June, and I'm training along with him, and that's all documented on my vlog channel as well. But um, yeah, that's really the only traveling that I have coming up. I would love to do IMAT's coming up. I'd love to do BeautyCon, but yeah, shit, we on a budget. Shit. <laughs> Someone asked, do you consider large, moving to a larger city to pursue TV? Do you know it could be completely, completely real? I love TV. I, that's the one thing I do love. Um, 
I love anything media related, radio, TV, that kind of thing. Um, it just depends on what capacity. Being a traffic reporter wasn't really the most, you know, exciting job in the world. Shit, you said the same shit over and over again, talk sh talking about the same, you know, roads over and over again. Half the time, the shit would be the same thing every damn day. So it wasn't as exciting. Of course, it's a great foot in the door. But um, I'd love to do something different, you know, something fun, more interview style, um, more feature reporting, things that where you're out and about on the scene, that kind of thing. I do do tele. I still am in television now. I work at a local, a smaller television station here, and I freelance as a reporter there. So I do have that job in addition to what I currently do too. So. Um, you have wonderful self-esteem. What chocolate girl experience from your past, good or bad, resonates with you, taught you about embracing and loving the skin you're in? I love that. Thank you, by the way. Um, you know, so many. There's, you guys have no idea the shit that I done been through, okay? Being a black girl, being, you know, the darker sister, being loud, you know, outspoken, being, you know, not so much in the box, um, not necessarily the standard of whatever people want to think that you're supposed to be to be successful in whatever the fuck you're trying to pursue. And it has truly been a challenge. It's been very, very much a challenge, very difficult as far as the journey is concerned because it's very easy to, for people to misunderstand you. Um, and it's very easy for people to put you in a category that really doesn't fit you or suit you and there's a lot of naysayers out there that are always going to constantly try to push you back or rein you in a little bit and I'm like ah, simmer down you know I have my own path let me create my own journey so it was through all those experiences the many that I have and I'm sure they'll come out in future videos so definitely leave, you know questions down below if there's anything more that you want to know in regards to that that have really shaped how I see myself as an individual have really made myself a stronger person and have truly shaped me as a human being and it also helps you know to have a husband who's so super duper supportive he knows I'm cray cray he suggests it's cray cray y'all see him on the vlog channel and the reality is you know um, you know, I don't, I don't want to fit a, 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 I don't want to fit one thing. You know, I've just never been that person. Um, I'm a jack of all trades and I love it that way. And I think as time has gone, I've just kind of grown, gotten more comfortable in my, my own skin, which is why I always encourage you guys to do and pursue everything you possibly can. Don't let anybody fucking tell you not a damn thing against what you're trying to do. You continue to do you as long as it's positive. How do we meet? Juice and I, how do we meet? Okay. Um, oh God, 22 minutes in. Shit. This is going to be a long ass video. Now you Y'all know I'm not gonna edit shit, but anyway, hold on, let me turn off the camera, turn it back on, hold up. Alright, this motherfucker stops after like 20 minutes, it was like 22 minutes in. I apologize y'all, lots of questions. How did we meet? Um, Juice and I actually met um, in school, we met at, at college, we met at KU, we both went to University of Kansas, Brock Chalk Jayhawk, and uh, we both met there, he's actually um, one of the first people that I met there. And I was actually introduced to him by a Haitian girlfriend of mine, who I thought was introducing to him to me because he was Haitian. And he was not, um, but he was fine as fuck. And uh, that's like that's the real reason why she introduced me to him. Not because she wanted me to meet him for anything other than the fact that she thought his ass was fine. So she introduced me to him like, that motherfucker is fine as fuck. Like she was trying to, you know, she was gonna get on it. You know what I mean? And when I finally did meet him, when she introduced us, us both, um, yeah, Juice was just, put his little charm on or whatever the fuck. Uh, and, uh, you know, he was a little ladies man back then. You know what I'm saying? Not that he's not now, but you know what I mean? Like, a lot more back then in college or whatever. You know, had a little, you know, chicken heads on his jock and shit. And uh, when I met him, it was very odd because I was so not the type of girl that he would have ever really pursued. And not really the type of girl who really took a lot of shit. <laughs> I just, I was like, uh, nah, motherfucker. You ain't gonna, mm -mm, you know, you you ain't gonna run that shit on me, my nigga, okay? So it was really hard for him to kind of get past that. Like, cause I was like, you know, I already knew he was a player player. And I don't mean like he was fucking everywhere. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying like, there was a lot of girls that thought he was fine. I mean, the brother's fine now. So imagine he was, he was, he was fine back then too, still. Okay, just a little smaller, you know? But um, anyway, we met, we became friends first. And uh, he hit me with the, um, uh, Let's study for our African American studies exam shit. Knowing damn well his motherfucking ass didn't want to study. And that's basically how it started. We actually ended up, um, you know, just getting together every now and again. We had mutual friends who so would all go out. Nothing really came of, of it, you know, because I was really stubborn. I didn't believe a word he, his motherfucking ass said. And um, then, you know, just one day we kissed, you know, and then we went a little further and then it just, we weren't, we weren't friends no more. You know what I'm saying? So that's how the hubby and I met and uh, we've been together ever since, which is cray cray. So anyway, he got me, y'all. Okay. <laughs> 
All right, let's see. What profession do I see myself in, radio or television? I'd love to do both. Uh, Y'all know, jack of all trades, love the shit. So I would absolutely love either one. I love doing all of it. So um, we'll see, you never know. This is gonna be my last question because this is a long ass video already as it is. And I'm, there's, I'm sure there's some other questions. And of course, maybe you guys have had some other questions you wanna ask. So please feel free to comment down below and leave those questions because I will do a follow up video to this. Um, but someone said they would love to see a 50 random facts or draw my life video. And the draw my life video, I had attempted, I had tried to attempt to do that shit and quickly realized that shit really wasn't my shit. Like I, it was just it's a lot of work I don't know if you guys know it's a lot of work to do those drive my life videos you have to set up the camera right the tripod have the shit done it takes forever to actually go through every single segment of your life and write it and erase it and edit it and I, mm -mm, nah, mm -mm, I ain't gonna be able to do it so um you know I I just I tried and I just I got flustered and I didn't want to do it and um, so maybe one day I'll figure some other way to do it 50 random facts I might I was just like shit this video you see right here is long as fuck although it's facts so I won't have to go into too much detail with them but you guys see I'm long-winded as a motherfucker so I will try to see if I can attempt to do a 50 random facts video because there's a lot of shit you probably don't even know about the girl so um, I may attempt to do that but yes that's gonna be my last question because I don't want this to be forever it's gonna be like a damn near 30 minute video whatever anyway Hopefully I was able to answer the questions you guys mostly wanted to know. Feel free to leave more questions down below. I will be doing a follow-up. The follow-ups will probably be shorter because the first round is always going to be a little longer since people have a ton more questions and maybe this video may conjure up some more. So um, leave those comments, questions down below. And yeah, make sure you guys check out the vlog channel, The Socialite Life TV. We will be doing those Real Talk Tuesdays where you guys will be able to check out um, male and female insights and perspectives on relationships, careers, life, dating, sex. We keeps it real. Like, that's the kind of shit that I want to be able to talk to you all about, you know, and um, share with you guys. So if you guys have those questions, this is going to give you a different perspective since he's a male. So anyway, you already know what to do. Thumbs up this video if you love seeing these videos from your girl. And yeah, y'all know what to do. Hit me up on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash socialite Sandy. Hit me up on my Facebook fan page or my Pinterest page. Those links are down below. Hit me up on my blog, the socialitelife.blogspot.com and hit me up on Instagram and I almost said keek. What the fuck? Ain't nobody do no damn keek. I know people do keek, but I don't do keek no more. Anyway, at socialite Sandy and y'all already know I absolutely adore y'all and I will see y'all in the next video. Love y'all. Bye. Guys been wanting us to do for a long ass time. We just ain't done the shit yet. Yeah. So you know what we gonna do, Juice? Took us some time to get around to it, but we're thinking every other Tuesday we're gonna do Tuesday talk to.